So yesterday I did a video on Mac OS Monterey. I installed the developer preview on my Mac and I walked you through some of the best features that are coming out to the next version. I'm doing the same thing today. We're talking iOS 15. I've installed it on my iPhone 12 Pro Max and I wanna talk some about the best features that are coming out and some small ones that I noticed after installing the developer preview. The first one is FaceTime and I showed this off in my Mac OS video. You can do things like share videos, watch them together, share files while you're inside of a phone call. But the one feature that the iPhone is getting that the Mac is not is portrait mode. So if you're in a call and you don't like your background, you can completely blur it out and it works as you think. It's not perfect as it shouldn't be. It's very hard to do portrait mode with video, but at least the entire background will be blurred. If you look around the edges of my face and my body, it's very soft and it's not consistent, but if you're some sort of maniac who's taking his meetings inside of a bathroom, at least you can block off that location. The next cool feature is notifications. If you look at the notifications now, compared to how they looked before, there is a big difference. As you can see here, they're more visually appealing, they're bigger, they're easier to look at, and because you have these new focus profiles, you get them grouped. So depending on what apps you're using, the ones you use the most, those notifications will always be at the top. Since I have a do not disturb profile activated in my focus group, all the notifications that I'm allowing to come in will sit inside of that bubble. If you take a look at the old iPhone, you don't have that kind of manipulation. It's just like your, your simple text being shown across the screen. Now you can manipulate each notification, like if I long press, let's say, on this YouTube video, I'll see an actual thumbnail pop up, and then of course I can go into the YouTube settings and manipulate anything I want. The other thing is focus groups. I kind of just talked about it, but focus groups allow you to be very granular with uh, what notifications come in. Right now I have a do not disturb profile activated, but there's tons of ones you can set up. These are the ones that are personally installed when you update to iOS 15, but you can make your own, right? The beauty about these focus groups is you can go into the settings and you can create permissions. So if you want notifications to be time sensitive, you can set that up. If you want them to be smart, like turn on when you get to a certain location, let's say you're setting up a group of notifications for work, for example, as soon as you get to your office, the focus work profile kicks in and the same can be done too if you, if you want it to activate when you get home for your personal focus group. Live text is also new to the iPhone. Ideally, before to do this, you'd have to download a third-party app like Google Lens, but now it's baked directly into the camera app. For example, I have a wonderful Spanish poem right here that I printed out, and if I open up my camera and have the lens look at it, I'll get this little box around it, and then this little thing will pop up. I press that, and then it will take the text from the picture and kind of downsize it for me. I have a couple of options. I can copy it and paste it into another application or I can translate it right on the spot. This little poem that I printed out has now been translated into English so that I can understand what's going on. Now this also holds true if you just have a photo inside of your camera. Like for example, this is a photo I took, which is a thumbnail from my previous video. If I just select the title and hit look up, it's gonna give me some suggestions. So it's gonna give me some suggestions from the news, it's gonna bring up Siri, or it's gonna allow me to manually do a web search myself. Now because of all this live text and lookup, there is a translate section under your settings which allows you to download languages onto your phone. So if you're constantly translating between English and Russian, you can download the language pack for Russian. The cool thing though is if you have an iPad, there's a specific app that's automatically installed. Like you can load up this app, copy and paste whatever you want, and it will translate it for you. There's a brand new app called the magnifier. They didn't really talk about this on stage during the keynote, but it's exclusive to the iPhone and iPad. It does exactly what you think it does. You open up the app and basically you can magnify the object, basically creating a macro shot. So if I zoom all the way in, I can get super duper close to my finger and then take a picture and then a little bit of AI magic and it cleans it up. I can then go ahead and zoom in and out so I can see the full process, and either I can save it to my Photos app or I can share it with someone. Let's send my hand to Justin. There you go, buddy. And there's also a tiny thing beside it, which is called people detection. So if I put this in front of me, right? I don't know if you guys can see this, but it will tell me exactly how far away 
that person is. Now, if you're a notes user, you're gonna absolutely love this because there's now tags available inside of notes. So if you're someone who has like hundreds of notes, you can create tags to quickly reference certain things that you wanna to get to quickly as possible. So for example, I have a shopping list here and I wrote hashtag shopping list. As soon as you put that hashtag down, the notes app knows to make a tag for it. So if I'm in the main screen and I quickly wanna to get to my shopping list without going through all my notes, I can just select the tag on the bottom and it will quickly take me there. You can do as many hashtags as you want. You can place them way inside a note if it's something specific you wanna reference later, but it just makes organization a bit better. The other thing is the magnifying glass. This should have been here the entire time. I don't know why Apple took it away, but they brought it back. If I'm scanning through text, it's a lot easier for me now because if I press down on a portion and I wanna like, select exactly where, where I want to delete or backspace, a magnifier pops up and it allows you to do that with precision. The next little update comes to the Find My app and right off the bat you can tell that the visual look of the map is nicer on the new version of iOS 15. It's brighter, it's more colorful and more enjoyable to look at. For example, I'm gonna select my air tags which are connected to my keys and with the new version of iOS, you have an extra feature that you don't have on the previous one. You can now be notified when you leave that item behind. So if I walk away and I pass a certain distance, my phone is going to let me know that I left my keys behind and kind of page me to go back and get them. Something you really couldn't do before. Even the health app got an update. If you look at it now, the previous version of iOS doesn't have a sharing function, whereas the new health app on iOS 15 does. This enables you to share all your health data with someone, whether it's, let's say, your spouse, a doctor, you have the ability to pass that information on so that that professional can better service your needs. Safari also got a big update. It's more visually appealing. It looks better. It's cleaner. This is the old version of it. This is the new one. You can see it doesn't take up as much space on the top of the device, giving you more vertical space to look at. No longer do you have that like standard way of switching between tabs. You can now just scroll to the right or left if you wanna move between tabs on your device. You also get access to tab groups, which I talked about in my Monterey video. But basically, if I wanna create a group, all I have to do is click on these two little windows, click on the tab groups button, and I can either create a new tab group or use the current web pages that I'm looking at and create a tab group surrounding that. Now, the cool thing is when you're scrolling the web page down, everything gets moved out of the way. If you wanna access your tabs again, you can either scroll up and then swipe to whatever tab you wanna look at, or you can tap on the bottom here and it will pop up the next tab or the current tab that you're looking at. Now, Apple also announced state ID digital cards. This is not coming to Canada. I don't know if it ever will come to Canada, but I hope it does because I would like to digitize my license. But if you're in the States, certain states there will be getting the ability to add their driver's license and other government-based IDs to the wallet app, allowing you to carry less cards around. And the final thing I wanna talk about is Spotlight. It now uses intelligence by taking your location, it looks through your photos and peoples and scenes and objects to provide you with better context. So for example, I just searched dogs on iOS 14 and 15, and right off the bat, it pulled all my dog photos from the photo album. Some things are still the same, like Siri's gonna look up what a dog is, and you can still get text with the word dog from your iCloud account. But even here, as you can see, it's pulling it from my iMessages uh, context to the search itself, which is something that couldn't be done before with iOS 14. So that wraps up some of the best features and new apps that are coming out to iOS 15. I hope I provided some value. And if you have any more questions or if there's something you found that was super cool, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.